They're both live. For double, double live. <laughs> Louise. Hopefully we are at least live somewhere. Somewhere. We're living. In the cloud. That's correct. I think we understand technology. Yes. Are we getting enough from our Brandon? Do we have some, If you're out there and can see us and can hear us, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you're there. Hopefully we're all good now. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's not like it's like our a millionth week doing this. No. But I will say the disclaimer is there's been a little bit of paranormal activity late this like, afternoon. Literally, as we're setting stuff up, there's something moving around in the kitchen. Uh, there's doors moving. There's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to blame it on the spirits here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's what we're going for. Do we have any thumbs up? Are we good? Yep. Roxanne gave thumbs up. All Thank right. you, Roxanne. Thank you, Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michaela said it's a little more. Alrighty. Well, we're probably a little muddled, so. Should we just like put it like up in? No, yeah, that probably incorrect. won't help. So, we'll try and really enunciate. We have great diction and syntax. Go back to high school theater and. Uh, we are I'm pretty good at that. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> if you're just joining us for the first time, my name's Alex. I'm Janine. And Brain is behind the camera there. And you are with uh, us on another virtual hard hat tour here live on Facebook. Woo. Or if you're watching this tomorrow, you're watching on YouTube or yeah. Facebook. But yeah. thank you to all of you that are joining us live right now. Uh, hopefully the, the rest of this tour will go off without a hitch. It's going to be great. Uh, Unless so, the ghosts don't want it to. I don't know. I don't know their motivation. Yeah, we'll see what the ghosts do. It'll be fine. Uh, but please stay uh, with us because we have a ton to show off. Uh, if you're looking behind us, you already see a ton of the progress in the last week. Uh, we've got progress here on the main floor, up uh, on the second floor. We've got painting, doors, plaster, all sorts of stuff to Obvious. show off. Uh, so we make, uh, hopefully you can stay tuned uh, the whole hour, hour, whatever, how long it goes. So. It's going to be inc inc impressive. It won't incredible. Be, it's going to be, be incredible. Long, impressive. But, uh, yes. But if you do, <laughs> guys, this is too long after all. If you have questions, concerns, thoughts, general insights, uh, we'd love to hear you. Brandon is monitoring all the comments. And also, if you can't hear us, or I don't know, just general notes. Yeah. But I was going to tell you. So I had like a minor addiction uh, during COVID times, during okay. quarantine. I've really been addicted to the hokey pokey. And I finally got myself off of it, and I turned myself around. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that came through unmuffled. <laughs> Comedic gold. So All right. let's start the tour. Well, let's uh, put our left foot in and come <laughs> back here. Uh, so uh, it's probably hard to tell uh, digitally, uh, but back here uh, they have been painting uh, for over well over a week uh, yeah. in this back lobby area now. I think last week was pretty yellow and yes, yeah, so they had kind of the uh, primer on it. Uh, so what you're seeing here, um, I'll kind of point out some of the differences here real quick. Uh, so the textured walls here, this has, you know, all, all the plaster has been done there. And then last week we showed you there was kind of this amber glaze that went on that. And that was uh, basically a primer so that all the paint would stick to that brand new plaster. What you're seeing here now is a base coat. And uh, over top of this will be a glaze. Do you want to grab a sample board or we can just turn around and look over there? Turn ourselves around. So this is our sample board, which we showed last week. It's been last week, right? Uh, so this is showing the final texture piece, the glaze, the base coat. So you're seeing all levels of what are eventually going to go on all the walls in compact form. And what's really cool to see, again, the artistry, this is just like a piece of plywood so you're not seeing a textured piece they did it this texture just like they did on our walls so you're seeing just yeah a little cut of our walls out yeah this was the sample piece um so the glaze now that they have all of the base on uh they'll be starting to do uh the glaze over top of that yes. uh which i think janine is going to be helping with right you're going to do all the artistic glazing if it involves a donut i'm all for glazing okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, they've uh, base painted almost everything uh, throughout here. Uh, we'll have Brandon take a look at these three new columns as well. They just painted these uh, this afternoon. 
uh, both the columns as well as the capitals. Which is a nice, dirty, uh, orange. We'll point out when we get upstairs uh, the final detail that's going to go on these. Uh, we showed that off uh, quite a few weeks ago now. We did. It's uh, a hot minute. Yeah, so these will match uh, upstairs a new design uh, that's going to really fit in. So uh, one of the next steps, uh, they've also painted all the ceilings. These, I believe, just have one coat on them. Yeah. Uh, so they still have a second coat to put on these. Uh, but already they're just absolutely gorgeous. And that cove light that we've been talking about for months and months and months yeah. uh, is really cool to now see uh, almost the finished product and just how smooth uh, that light is coming out of there. Yeah, because when we, we, I think we showed before, um, when it was that shiny coat and it was really reflective, you were able to see like each singular LED light. So. We did uh, the most scientific of studies, which was supposed to place a piece of cardboard right. up there to see how it was going to diffuse and disperse, uh, and it's exactly how we imagined it to be. You can't see each individual LED bulb. You're just getting the overall glow uh, and warmth of what's coming out from behind uh, there. There. Yeah. There. So just very, very cool back here. Uh, some of the next stuff that they'll be doing, once they get the walls done, they'll be going around all this ornamental cove work. Uh, that will get painted. That will also get uh, kind of a glaze wipe off uh, uh, technique to that. And then all of this uh, soffit work here is going to get painted as well. So uh, absolutely amazing to see the progress that they make every single day. Uh, it's really transforming, especially these columns today. Yeah. Uh, now that they, they got those painted. Well, because, you know, when you see the bright white, it is much, it is very jarring to see. But yeah, you, we had to, wanted to. Make this again the same color scheme what was in 1929 we are in the national registry of historic places so all of the design elements we wanted to choose had to be something that would make sense uh when they designed this building in 1929 so we wanted to have that same color scheme that same character and charm um that they would have had when they first built this theater yeah and uh we can't go too far into the restroom vestibule <laughs> there without losing wi-fi but you can see they've also been uh painting in there so that's got all of the uh, base coat on it, and then they'll be doing the glaze in there soon as well. Um, and we do have an update of furniture sorts. Oh, yes. So, for any of you who know our wooden benches with the iron work that matches the stairway railing, we actually have a guy, John, that's working on them. He's already stripped them all down, sanded them all down. They look like brand new pieces of wood. And hard to give as an example now, but all those baseboards, especially the new ones that have that nice, dark, deep, rich wood stain is what we're matching them to. So it's, again, we're going to be taking uh, what was existing in the theater and giving it a nice polish and shine with new paint on the ironwork and new wood, you know, nice and sanded down and stained. So thank you, Johnny. They look really good. We stopped by the shop today and got to see a uh, sneak preview. Oh, a work really in good. progress. They look great. Yes. Uh, yeah, and those have been here, we believe, I think we so found a receipt since about 1983. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely something we wanted to save, but uh, it needed a little TLC. It needs some love and care. Uh, and yeah, it's awesome to be able to work with local folks uh, to keep uh, that historic charm yeah. and uh, really keep everything here. So. Any questions, concerns, general thoughts? Sweet! Uh, so yeah, most of the work down here on the first floor has been uh, paint. Yes. And uh, they're making really good progress. Uh, still have a little ways to go. Um, I'm gonna personally, I'm gonna be really excited when they start putting the glaze on, because that is literally, you know, the last step to that. It. Yes. Um, I think unless you've seen the process before, when you sometimes see just this, you know, single coat. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how it's gonna turn into that, you know, really textured, layered uh, look. Um, yeah, because when you're looking down the wall, like even I know on camera, it's very hard to pick up on the texture. But yeah. even in person, when you're looking straight down the wall, you're not getting the full pop uh, as when the glaze is on. Because it's just going to show all those nooks and crannies, like putting butter on an English muffin. <laughs> I think that's a very <laughs> solid analogy. You see the shine, the curves, the peaks and valleys. There you go. Yeah. And it'll just the highs, the lows. The highs, the lows, all of the exciting and wonderful parts of our Egyptian theater walls. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's, uh, I think, some of the other stuff here on the main floor that they've done over the last week. Uh, some more work behind concessions, running drains, stuff that you can't really see a whole lot of progress, Ooh, I want to show uh, but certainly is starting to get uh, to the end there. Uh, just some other touch-ups uh, here and there throughout here. Janine is apparently... 
Oh, yes. Da, 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 da. We have so many guns. It's so very exciting. So look, they're amazing. Any volunteer who's worked our soda machine, this is, this is it. This is the holy grail. This is like magic. There is something in that. <laughs> We're pretending that didn't exist. So it's, we've had in the past, we've talked about our concession stand obviously being a challenge for 1,400 seats and two points of sale. But not only that, we had one Coca-Cola dispenser. So say a family of four came up on one side and the other side, and they're like, hey, I need six Cokes. It was one at a time. Now each station will have the ability and to switch between, and you won't have one volunteer who's just hammering at it. Will I lose signal if I go in there? No, you sh well, you should be fine. Unless I don't know, unless the ghosts don't like you. So we can show off uh, yes. what the original, uh, not original, but this <laughs> is from um, 1929. It's this is the uh, pop machine that used to be in the old concession stand here. Uh, we're repurposing that, using that back of house uh, for volunteers and staff and everything else uh, in our prep kitchen here. As Janine was just talking about. It was um, a challenge. Yeah, and when you do the math now, I mean, we made it work. Yeah. But it's kind of crazy to think about you just, uh, 1,400 seats and one soda dispenser. <laughs> well, and Shad, I mean, like, we've got some amazing volunteers who just jump right into that. Our, <laughs> our past intern, Sean, he got a baptism by fire. He got to run that, <laughs> that soda machine during a movie, which movies are bananas for us. And it was a 35 classic film, and he poured some soda that day but it's one of those things yeah you make it work yeah but it's just going to again alleviate uh what we have expectations for our staff and volunteers and make your patron experience better because you're not like cool i'm the seventh coke in line <laughs> it'll just make things quicker nice and easy and again when we hopefully back open up this fall it's going to take down that line and pressure and uh congregation of people to keep everyone safe healthy socially distanced so it's a win-win in all yeah. around very soon we will be spoiled with all these no. new, all these newfangled like back in things, my day so. uh anything else here on the main floor no besides the ghost so. nothing yeah let's go let's head upstairs <laughs> uh we talked to you about it last week but again you can see uh some of our different shelving out here uh that we purchased used through an auction Woo. uh was a great way for us to be able to get what we needed to for the new uh storage rooms uh, but be able to save a considerable amount of money. Yeah. We get about $8,000 worth of shelving for about $1,200. <laughs> so you see that is the base color. Um, and these before didn't have anything. This is what it looked like before. So we wanted to zhuzh up again in a way that felt uh, historically accurate. So we wanted to use the same color that you're seeing in that ornamental plaster work. And it was amazing. Again, I think I'm... I'm just in love with the painters because the cool stuff they do. He made these original triangles and he said, can you make it a little more poppy? And then he just, real quick, I swear it was like two strokes. Yeah. And then added some of this nice gold. So it's again, just bringing some of those really cool architectural elements of the theater, just a little bit more to life, more pop, more zhuzh. Again, because this was built uh, during the stock market crash. So finding ways to add a little magic yeah and these are things that aren't adding really any expense no. but it, you know just a little more detail yeah adds a lot more interest mm -hmm. and is a great way those three three new columns that we have on the main floor it's a great way to be able to tie these in with there so everything seems really cohesive, cohesive. Yep. word of the day um Ooh. fresh as of about half an hour ago uh the expanded foyer doors are starting to go on a little dusty so pretty though. um but absolutely gorgeous um we've talked about before how um we went off of a design kind of well, i guess they hard to see from up here but uh our front foyer doors not the front doors but uh, the second set of doors have kind of those three panes of uh glass yes and so we replicated that here um we wanted to make sure that uh, even when these doors were closed um that this room didn't feel too you know claustrophobic uh that you could still see what was going on and let some light in uh, to both of these areas so and look i mean Brandon, look at these hinges yeah. so like again just little details like this uh is what we wanted to make it again historically inspired historically accurate so you have these more decorative hinges that you know just 
And these match uh, all the other hinges uh, that were existing throughout the building. Yeah. So they've got the ball tip uh, on the hinges here. Uh, so we'll make sure we found those as well as the same finish. Um, I don't know if they'll be on by next week, but the door poles mm. for these are awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited yeah. for everybody uh, to see those. So they finished up with all of the plaster work in here and they had a lot of stuff yes. uh, up here in the expanded foyer. You had uh, all the textured walls, all the cove up there, uh, a lot of the flat plaster around uh, the doorways here. Uh, they also finished up, there were some small areas here uh, in concessions um, above the countertop there. So that textured plaster is done now. And uh, if any of you are Instagram story followers, you know we had a big day this week. Our speaker system worked. Oh, yes. And we did christen it in the most Brandon way possible with a Dolly Parton Christmas song. That's correct. That's how we christened <laughs> our speaker system. It felt very appropriate. Yes. And it uh, sounds great. So if you look in the ceiling, uh, all the previous weeks, there were big empty holes up here, but now they are filled. Uh, so if you look at the bigger round circles up here, our speakers, uh, there's even a subwoofer in the ceiling there. So this will allow us, uh, again, not only throughout all of the lobby spaces on the main floor, the rear lobby, uh, the mezzanine, the expanded foyer, the restrooms on both floors, all of them will now have a sound system that will allow us to have uh, pre-show music when an event is going live. We'll be able to pipe through that audio. So whether it's a movie or a comedian or a concert, uh, whatever it is, we can send that through all of these speakers so if you need to run out and grab something at the concession stand, run to the restroom, uh, have a little kid and just need to step out you know, for a quick break, uh, you'll still be able to listen to what's going on. It will also give us the ability to make announcements yep. and other things. And up here in the expanded foyer, uh, this system, while it is tied in with all of the lobby systems, will also allow us, there's gonna be a large TV display up here uh, that when we get out of COVID, uh, we'll be able to use the space up here uh, for meetings and different functions. And so we'll be able to isolate these speakers. So even if there was something uh, going on in the theater, we could isolate this and just have the speakers uh, connected to, you know, if there was a presentation up here, watching a video mm -hmm. or something out, uh, just gives us a ton of flexibility to use all of these spaces in so many different ways. Uh, we've talked about that a lot. That was really one of our key uh, kind of design factors, especially with this new space, uh, we wanted to make sure it was as flexible as possible so that we could use it in as many possible ways as yeah. we could come up with. Well, and what's really great, um, just about hearing the sound that's actively going on stage and seeing the live feed, if you've been to a show, you might have noticed, hopefully not, we sometimes have to peek in the doors and be like, where are they at in the movie? So that we know when to start popping popcorn for intermission, to start getting ready to, for ushers to be at their stations for people to exit. This is gonna, again, alleviate our staff and volunteers to be like, oh yeah, that's where they're at. You can stay in your station, still be able to help patrons without having to disrupt uh, what they're going through and what they're doing and be able for us to prepare better for you guys when we are, especially outside of COVID, when we have big intermissions and we know, oh, hey, Scotty's on his last song, let's pop some popcorn. So again, yeah. it's just going to improve the overall patron experience because it's just gonna make our jobs so much easier, which is gonna be really to your benefit. Yeah. So yay. Yeah. Um, so I think that's all the updates up here. Uh, out in the mezzanine here, uh, we'll show off a couple of uh, improvements here or progress that they made just over the last week. Uh, a lot more uh, plaster work finished up uh, around the walls here. And then they've spent a ton of time on the ceiling here. If you guys remember, uh, yeah. especially over where I'm standing, this entire ceiling uh, was opened up to be able to get duct work up in there. Uh, and that connects to the system that uh, provides heating and air conditioning for the main lobby there. And so there was a lot of work to patch this. Um, the white that you're seeing is all new plaster, uh, kind of skimming across all of those seams to hopefully make everything look seamless. What's that for? Uh, this is a return air vent. Ah. So these are return air vents. Um, right under the balcony seat. So you're imagining this is the bottom of the triangle and the balcony seats are going Richard. Yeah, so there's a lot going on up here. You've got the air ducts here. Uh, you've got some of the light cans here. Uh, once they're done painting, those will get finished off. Uh, the bigger circles here will be more ceiling speakers uh, that go out here. You've also got uh, sprinkler heads in there. 
And then uh, above brand in there, there's kind of a rectangular slot. Uh, that's for some more of the kind of gallery lighting uh, that we also here. have uh, in here. I guess you can kind of right above the concession stand. So okay. these are, we've been referring to them as little ice cube lights. Yeah, uh, that sounds like an accurate The ice question. cube trays, don't they look like the little cube they trays? Look like perfect ice cubes. Yeah, um, so those will be uh, throughout the mezzanine area as kind of our new uh, gallery lighting. Uh, we've talked about, I think, many, many times the big... <laughs> we did not like the old ones. The big, old, obnoxious uh, track lights that we had. Uh, and up here in the mezzanine, we had a lot of patching uh, that had to take place. So there was multiple spots where there were vents uh, as part of the old heating uh, system. So those came out and those have been plastered in uh, with ma uh, matching texture. You can see over here uh, along the base, uh, again, uh, more plaster that they've uh, tied in. But they Today, right there. Um, so there were some old emergency lights uh, up here. There was three of them here in the mezzanine. Uh, they're not needed anymore uh, because the new LED lights are now on a new uh, battery backup inverter. Nice. So these are coming out over the next week. Uh, they'll get filled in with plaster. Uh, the plasters are actually uh, planning to be done with all of their work by this Friday. <laughs> so they are wrapping up very quickly. Uh, and then it's going to be up to the painters to quickly uh, follow behind, which they are, they are churning and burning. They are moving right along. So this is great. Uh, a lot more door hardware starting to go in uh, with restrooms. Uh, we've got more door, door hardware going in uh, starting tomorrow. So we're getting a lot of uh, the doors hung so that all the, you know, pull handles push, uh, the closers, the door kicks, all of that stuff. Um, downstairs, I think there's just a huge heaping pile of boxes <laughs> of door hardware. Uh, and it really is amazing. I don't know how many meetings I had with Lisa talking about door hardware. Uh, you, you wouldn't think there's that many decisions to make about a door, but when you talk about all the different finishes and the types of closers and push and pulls and... Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, oh my goodness, yeah. There's been I will never look at a door the same way again, so... <laughs> I have a big appreciation uh, for the detail that goes into those now. Very much so. Uh, you say this project has opened new doors? We are, we so are opening many. so many new doors. And yes. I think, all in all, we've been adorable through the process. Some more than others. That's Thank very you. accurate. Bring them <laughs> to the doorbell. Because you know, the camera looking the cutest and not making a fool. Yeah. So, that was the winner of the day. Um, and then, uh, Janine, do you want to talk about what you're going to be doing Saturday? Oh, we're going to tear it up. What you asked, the carpet uh, that we've been <laughs> shaming and talking about for a long time. So this carpet has served its purpose. It's lived a really long life, and it's going to live at a farm upstate. Um, <laughs> it's been here. Since 1983, uh, in the renovation that they did uh, when they saved the theater. So we think it's for its service. However, it's time for it to move on. So we are so excited this Saturday. Stay tuned. I'm definitely going to be doing live streams, especially Instagram stories. We're having an awesome group of volunteers come in and literally tearing up the carpet, rolling it up, tossing it away uh, to get ready because our new carpet's coming the week after Labor Day. So all this stuff that you're seeing about Yes, it concerns us too. We'll figure out what to do by Saturday. Uh, but but uh, we were talking about tearing up carpet uh, is almost perfect right now during COVID because we have this big theater carpet everywhere so we can socially distance. Yep. Uh, there's it's gonna be dusty. some dust, so we're gonna wear masks anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so it's perfect. Uh, we've got uh, a it's great- It's air conditioned, so we're not dying of heat. Uh, yes, thank goodness we were not replacing carpet uh, a year ago. We would be dead. Uh, be awful. Gives me kind of uh, flashback memories of when we took out seats about eight years ago. That looks- uh, yeah. No AC in the middle of the summer, pulling out 1,400 seats. No, thank you, please. Uh, think we all lost about 50 pounds and just sweat that summer. I so. just take that part of it. Yeah, so it, it was a lot of work. So So that's going to be, stay tuned, Saturday. I'll be sharing tons of pictures, probably do a live stream to just show you guys because another historic moment, We there's very few times that the carpet has changed in this place, and this will be one of them, and hopefully not for a long time uh, because we chose a really nice carpet. So yeah. really excited. Thank you in advance. All the volunteers are coming to help us. We'll give you a huge thank you next Tuesday as well. And yeah, next Tuesday should be a very different tour because anywhere you see carpet right now, including the auditorium, it's going to be gown. So, yes. very exciting. Uh, in theory. If, <laughs> you, if you are watching and are not uh, a volunteer and have a hankering uh, to take carpet out, 
send an email uh, as soon as you can think of to <laughs> volunteer uh, at egyptiantheater.org. Uh, again, it's volunteer at egyptiantheater.org. Uh, let us know. We can send you details on what we're doing on Saturday. Uh, we've got a great group of volunteers already. Uh, almost all of our staff is going to be here. We're back. Yeah. 
We should both that Brandon. We said, you guys, the ghosts are not happy today. We said the ghosts were being a little rambunctious today. They're not messing. So where are we at? 815 Live. See you on Thursday at 6 p.m. In case you didn't read the text. Uh, I was trying to find a pen desperately in case you were wondering what my pantomiming was. But for real, for true, 815 Live has been a really great series. Don't know if you caught what Alex said, but it's been really cool to hear all these artists come in and say, just excited to have a stage perform on and to be facing the back side of the stage, which is different for them. So we have Peter Lindsay this Thursday at 6 p.m. Get to watch an awesome singer-songwriter that's a local uh, artist as well on our stage. All of the artists will be local. And this whole thing uh, has been sponsored in part by the Farney R. Willitzer Foundation. So every artist you're seeing on our stage is also receiving a stipend because we want to be able to support local music and your support of us helps us support local music. So keep supporting the Egyptian theater. You guys have already been awesome. You warm our hearts. You stick around when we don't have sound or audio or whatever. We still love you for it. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns, Bran? Perfect, Bran, yeah, do you have anything else to say? We've got uh, up. So I will uh, put right underneath uh, Janine here, if what you're interested in finding more information about the expansion project, you can go to lightscameradonate.org, uh, great location to be able to see uh, where we're at, details about the project, yeah. uh, all the donors, All that. Um, but more uh, importantly, uh, that is where you can support this uh, really historical project. Again, this is the first time in 90 years uh, that we have expanded the footprint of the Egyptian theater. <laughs> I'm just saying, my <laughs> all the way over there. Yes, you can help us. We uh, <laughs> we joke we were in the downtown merchants meeting today that we're like, we're still here, we're still chugging along. Um, and you guys have really made it worth it for us because we joke, we all get together and work today together every day. Um, but seeing you guys support the theater as much as we love the theater, we've talked about it a million times, but we are just the stewards in this time and place, as horrible as this time might be right now, we still get to be part of this awesome project and you guys have made it um, really awesome to share with you guys because that's the whole part. That's why we're so excited to hopefully have programming. We're hopefully going to have some movies this fall. Um, we'll be rolling out what that looks like, uh, what expectations are gonna be, you're gonna wear a mask, uh, what concessions will look like, what will seating look like, what can I expect when I come to the show? All of those things we're working on now, so know that we're diligently trying to keep you safe, but still hopefully welcome you guys back into our theater uh, for some movies, maybe some flashlight tours. Hopefully they're as active as today, so you get your money's worth. We can't schedule the ghosts, they do what they want. But we are really excited uh, in all truthfulness to just have you guys back and hopefully you guys get to see what you've been able to see uh, through Facebook Live in person. So does that wrap it up? Wrapping it up? I think that covers everything. We're wrapping it up. So we'll see you maybe Thursday. If not, we'll be back here Tuesday night at 5.30 for our next virtual hard hat tour, hopefully with no carpet. We'll see you guys then.